Right, come and join us. We are on a day out to East Castle. So when you buy a new Land Rover, Land Rover, you get a free experience day where you can test the capability. So we are going to go and test their Defender. So you drive their cars, not yours. So we can't test our winch out. So we're going to go and see what we can do in a Defender there. We are taking the Tesla. We will jump in it in a minute. We will see what the range is. A lot of people are saying, what is the real life range? So it's a bit of a weird day, isn't it, George? Look, it's like grey over there and blue over there. Random. Um, so we'll we'll have some wipers on and stuff. We'll get in. We'll see what the charge is. And they've got a charging point at Eastner, so we'll find that. So we'll start to get used to how easy it is to live with the Tesla. Right, let's get in. Let's go. Right, we're off on our way. We've got 133 miles of range. So the sat nav is telling us it's 42 miles to where we're going. So let's see whether we've got 133 minus 42 when we arrive. Right, so we're driving and you can see now we're down to a 116 mile range. And it's quite interesting. They've got a little app on the screen here where you can look at the energy usage. So if you press this button here and go on to energy, you can see a graph of the energy and you can change the scale. But you can see my range on the predict, depending on how I'm driving, it will change. So it was 113 a minute ago, but if I'm driving quickly or accelerating, it drops to a projected range of 50 if I'm accelerating. Right, so we're driving along. We're at the top of a big hill, a big local hill. And we've gone up the hill and you can see the uh, the power. This is consumption, not efficiency. So this is consuming a lot of power. And then as we go down the hill now, we should do regenerative braking, which should be cool. And so our range is showing at the moment, it's showing 78 as we let off and let the car freewheel down the hill. Our range should increase. Now interesting, it's saying our range up here is 105. But we should start to get a, there you go and you can see that we're actually well, i think where it goes green is where we're actually putting power back into the battery so you can see there we're, we're increasing our range right so there we go we arrive at land rover experience east of the castle it's a slightly rainy day we'll have a look at the at East the Castle. Right, we need to find an electric car charging point. So we've got a guy welcoming us here. So let's get parked up. Right, okay, let's just have a quick look at the range on the Tesla. So we were 113, and what were we, 133, sorry, weren't we? And we've done 42 miles. So we should have, by calculation, something like 97. Um, but we've got 83, so it's not quite doing what we needed to do. We've still got the autopilot error because we've still got a camera out. We're still waiting for Tesla to contact us. Right, let's get this plugged in. We've got an electric charging point here and go on our course. So we're trying to charge the Tesla. Um, we've got this tricky little charging thing here on a charging point. Um, it's supposed to be some super, but the charge is just not having it. It's not communicating with the car. So it always closed. Right, so we'll try the basic one and see if that works. Right. Right, we've got the more basic charger in it now, and it seems happy to that. There we go. So, there we go. It's going to charge. Got the green light here as well. It's going to say it's three hours, but that's fine. We've got the green light on on the thing. Right, we're okay. Let's go and do some Land Rover stuff. Right, so we're just outside before we set off. We're looking at the car. So they've got the winch fitted. We, we know how to fit one of them. So that's interesting to see. Interestingly, the one over there hasn't colour-coded his, his front parking sensors but we digress right so we fitted the extended wheel arches that came out to about here the other day now this is an accessory we haven't fitted yet now these clearly don't fit these checker plate bits here clearly don't fit if you've got the extended arches so i'm surprised that the eastern castle ones haven't got the extended arches because you'd think they'd be going through the trees we'll have a look take a look under here george you can see where they've got all the leaves caught in the look they got all the leaves and everything so they're clearly going through some water and stuff with them let's have a look what else they got in accessory wise they got the mirror covers fitted they've got deluxe color coded door handles with the remote keyless entry which we haven't got and they got the rear they got the extra rear pack there what have they got on the back they got the tow hooks fitted on the back so these are this is the 240 so that's the 240 horsepower diesel model on that what other goodies have they got on? And they got the deploy. Looks like there's a 
a deployable tow bar under here. Um, what tyres have they got on, George? I think these are the tyres we've just got. So they're the, always getting windy, the Goodyear. So yeah, that's the ones we've got. But interest, what size wheels have they got? Have they got 18s or 19s? So they got, now they got 20s. So they're riding on 20 inch. So I was surprised they haven't gone down for the um, the steels. So that's interesting. Right, we better get back inside because I think they want to get going. Right, so we're in a little convoy. There's three of us. We've got the instructor. Obviously we're in sort of COVID times. So normally the instructors would be in the car helping you. He's up front with a walkie talkie. We've got a little walkie talkie here. So he's in the first car right at the front. Then we've got some other people who've bought a Land Rover and for the day in front of us. And then we're at the back of the convoy. Um, so we're just driving through the woods and we've already had a discussion about all terrain progress control and hill descent and hopefully we'll do a bit more of that we sort of went around about discussion about dynamic stability control i'm not sure we concluded whether that was useful or not um so we're going to question them some more as we get going but i think he was he was more keen to get going than than talk to me specifically at the moment which is fair enough so let's get into the off-road bit We've, uh, we've, we've raised the suspension already. Um, so this car has got an extra, it's got the locking rear e-dip. So we'll bring up the menus now and have a look what that looks like. So there we go. So our car doesn't have, we've only got the, the middle diff locking, the central diff. This one's got the rear e-dip. So we've got a locking rear diff as well. Um, so that's quite, trick um, we didn't spec that but I think that is worth specking if you're buying a Defender and plan to use it off-road we've also got the configurable terrain yeah, response right one thing they've done is they've blocked this um, settings button so we can't go in there and mess and change connectivity or mess about they've foiled my attempts to have a little rummage around inside but anyway we're, we're here for the off-roading not to play with the uh, system so we're just trying to see what different settings they have on different spec models um, this has obviously got a different interior to ours we've got the black interior in here right this is interesting so this one hasn't got the rear view mirror this has actually got the rear view so that's actually a camera like you can see you can see it, the view's not moving as i move uh, um, which is interesting because i thought they only fitted that when they had the middle seat because then when if someone sat in the middle you couldn't see but this one's got the uh, the camera look doesn't I matter. believe you can also turn it into a mirror if you flick this down as well oh man yeah so then Hold that's up. Uh, normal mirror uh, normal mirror look but the uh, interesting if you look at that george if you get it to suit the camera they obviously one advantage with the rear the mirror one disadvantage is you've got that spare wheel half in the way haven't you mm. whereas when you can you see that there yeah and then when you flick it over to that one you have got a much clearer, clearer view of more stuff so there we go maybe that's cool i don't know if that's retrofitable but there we go that's one extra gadget we've got a sunroof in here um oh george's got the gopro up there oh, well done george that was good we haven't got the sunroof in ours um what other goodies have they got oh we got a fridge no what have they got in here we got a oh look they got the when they fitted the winch they gave you the little sort of bit so i thought that i had to go over there there's a question for him should we ask him when he comes george we say what is that for we've got one of those and look they got Captain Hook, look. Ta da Right. Right, here we go. Again, nice and slowly remembering it. Yeah. Good grain, so you yeah, ain't gonna go fast. Ain't gonna go Take fast. Side, so let it walk through. If we think about it, the faster yeah. we go, oh. the more we're likely to lower our car towards the grain by maintaining the suspension. The slower we go, the more we maintain our suspension. So we have half a metre of articulation on each corner on the new Defender, so that is pretty immense. Right, so we're driving along. We've put it in low ratio. He's asked to put it in muds and ruts. So I'm going to ask him in a minute why they haven't decided to use auto terrain response, because that should, in theory, select what's ever needed. So oh, actually, let me get on the blower and ask him now. Here we go. Let's film this. How are we doing, Swanee? Everything okay back there? Yeah. One question. So you, we've put it in muds and ruts. Um, if we'd have left it in auto or put it in auto terrain response two, would it have automatically selected the same settings for us? So left in auto, it will keep adapting. It will constantly adapt to where it is. 
So it is a reactive system. Okay, so it's completely reactive to what's going on around it, around the car, through its inputs, through wheel speed sensors, etc. Then, as a more advanced off-road driver, you would look at the terrain that you're driving and be proactive. So being proactive, you would get in there and maybe adapt your car, adapt your uh, um, settings. And as I say, you've got you've got adaptable settings on this car in terrain response to. So, you know, once you get a better understanding of what you're doing. However, the Auto TR is very good. It is incredibly good. Um, just really want to push you guys to actually touch buttons, push buttons, and have a play with the car. So, on the way up there, it would have held first gear more in mud and ruts. Auto TR might have been so at some points recognised it was sort of more beneficial to be in grass, gravel, snow, which might have been second gear. And you may have found going up there in low range, holding on to first gear as, as well as it was, there was no need to sort of really panic with it. It just walked up there. No need to worry about, you know, things like DSC off or anything like that. Cool. Thanks. So you're getting a feeling of that hill descent control. So hill descent yeah. control is applying the brakes for you, keeping it at a very modest speed. That's adaptable through your rocker switch. It says resume on it. Um, if you rock it up, it goes faster. If you rock it back, it goes slower. Um, that doesn't mean that you can't accelerate. So if you accelerate, that will allow you to go faster. And as soon as you come off the gas, it will bring you back down using hill descent control. Um, but do remember, as I said earlier, the foot brakes never off limits. So if I want to stop, I push, push the brake. Hill descent control doesn't stop the car. This bit looks quite good. It's quite a fierce dip off here. It's good having the camera because we ain't gonna be able to see over the bonnet there, are we? So I'm going into a very sharp 90 degree left hand bend with a big drop. So I'm taking hold of the steering wheel, I'm moving it slowly round to the left, I'm on full lock. I'm using the foot brake. I'm slowly working towards the hill. I'm gonna feel my front wheels drop in. As they drop in, I need to start to think about where I'm steering. I'm in a really big pothole here. So just take your time through here. You see the car articulating as it works its way around. That's it, car two, nice and steady, right she comes, brilliant. Right, so we've got to a bit where they're demonstrating the lean. So we've changed the display. George has flashed up the display and we're gonna see what angle that gets it over to because it always feels like you're about to turn it over. They are at an angle. They are at an angle. So let's have a look. Here we go. 18, 19, 20. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, that is quite scary. 26. 27. 28. 27, 28. I think 28 is the highest we'll go. How are we doing, Swanee? Yeah, we're all good. You okay? Yeah, can we go somewhere where we can use the wade mode? And I've never been brave enough to take mine anywhere where we can use the wade mode and see the depth and do all that sort of trickery. Okay, so uh, two, if you just come to a stop um, where you are, and then car one, you carry on with me, just until we get out of the way a little bit. And then car two, if you take hold of your um, TR, open that up, and choose the weight setting, which is the second one in from the right. Yep. Yeah, got that. Mm. Yeah, we're good. Okay, so now at this stage, if you go and take the home button, touch the home button. Yeah. And then touch the app button, all yep. the four little squares. And then in that option, choose weight sensor. Yep. And then. Yeah, got it. And then in there, you've got your weight sensing coming up, okay? Yeah. So that's showing you a max of two foot nine or 900 mil. Um, and as you start now to drive through the water, that's going to allow you to see what sort of depth of water you're in there. Which obviously isn't 900 mil, but it certainly is uh, probably enough to shut a standard sort of council room. Just come on through there and yep. try that. Yep. Good job. Right, so yeah, we're trying out the wade sensing. So it should, so where it's showing us the water level. Is it actually giving us any? I mean, it's not super deep, but it's giving you an idea yeah, on uh, your left hand side. That looks like uh, you're about halfway up the wheels. You know, you know the place just disappeared underwater. Uh, right, this looks quite deep. Let's see how deep we can get the weight sensing to go here. You clearly got a 
deep water it's come out it doesn't actually give you the reading we're having a discussion about it, it doesn't tell you how high you are because we know the maximum is 900 um but we're we're still a way off just on the way it's portraying it we're a way off there we go Right, so one interesting thing is if we've left it on wade mode, we're not wading, you can see we're just doing muds and ruts, but obviously where the parking sensors are mounted in the cameras, they're picking up the verge, and it keeps thinking I'm going through deep water, which is, which is quite, quite, got some fairly wild uh, axle articulation going on. They've obviously set this bit up to show what it can do with different... Oh, oh, we've got road rage. Look, there's a load of Land Rovers coming the other way. <laughs> Come on, we're the defenders. We'll push them lot out of the way. Right. Right, road rage incident resolved. Defenders pushed. Push that Discovery Sport was looking like it was doing a good job, eh? Ah, it's a Discovery, not a Discovery. I can see the uh, back, George. Oh, I can no. see more clearly from the back. Yeah, you can see, the, see in there, George. Definitely oh. a Discovery look. Oh, no. So one thing we've just been debating as we're sat here driving leisurely along um, is the interior colour. Now the black, it does seem to show, especially on that door, George, it seems to show the marks more than it does on our green. I don't know if the light's conducive to it, but I think I'm preferring the green. Look all along. We've just put the angle on and we've got minus 30 degrees, which is quite impressive. There we go, minus 29. Right, oh, we've, we've left behind. We did a little pause there to get that angle. That was quite impressive. Wow. 30 degrees, that's that's, that's our cover. record. As yeah. you hear, George is like, I can't reach the screen. <laughs> that was pretty mad. <laughs> right, let's have a look. Oh we're, oh, we're doing some climbing now. So this is the one we came down earlier, I think. Yeah. He's taking us all around in a big figure of eight circle thing. Mm. Right, so what mode are we in, George? I forget. I think we're in alto. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're in order. Climb up in So at the end, here's our challenge. There's three of us defenders. We're all doing the same route. I'm trying to get mine muddier than everybody else's. So we'll have a look at the end and see if I win. The person that wins is the person. The person who wins unofficially here, obviously, is the person with the muddiest car. So that's our challenge. Right, so we've let them drive ahead a bit. We'll try and get this a bit muddy in this one. Let's try this. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, some more there mud. Yeah, go. Go. that's what we're talking about mud. <laughs> yeah, we got to, we got to be winning now. We've been picking up a little bit more Yeah, we're good. Oh, we got to win this, George. I reckon it's in the bag. Yeah. I reckon we got this. All right, yeah, a bit more speed. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, let's raise this one. See that one, George? No. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I had the wipers ready that time. Oh. Let's, let's let them, let's let them go ahead a bit. Go on. anyone does this unofficially this isn't official but if you're doing the off-road driver experience and you're in a convoy the trick is to see who can get the muddiest car oh, oh we got, no, oh, we got, got road, road rage. rage i think we've actually got mud on the, the sun roof, roof right? yeah <laughs> i think that's an achievement in itself should we give him some what are you doing here should we do <laughs> should, we, should we do the hand gestures should we give him all that <laughs> Well, it's banter, isn't it? Get off my land. Oh, there we go. Here we go. 
Here we go, come on. He's nice and clean. He's nice. Yeah, where's he been driving? He's not going to win any competitions. Oh, there's more. Is there more? Yeah. Oh. Oh, we got loads of space this time. Oh, we are winning, George. Have a look outside the. Have a look out the mirror, George. I think we got the. We got the muddy thing in the bag. Look at them. Look at them. They're not even muddy. I'm actually going to wind the window down and stick my hand up. Yeah, go on. Get the camera out. Yeah. Have a look. Just check we're doing all right, George. What's you have to do? Yeah. Mm. I think we're doing all right. I hope that captured it. I think we need to drive at the drive at the verges. I think we're going to get a bit more mud there. Yeah, no, have a look. Oh, go on, go on. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Yeah, oh, there we go. No, I mean, they've got an ideal place here. Not only wow. they've got some great tracks, but look at the scenery you're driving through. It's amazing. Oh, I reckon we can go and do some splash in there. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on. All right, let's keep yeah, up. Like oh, that's got to be good. That's got to be some more mud on it. I don't know. No. Reckon it's too. We've done better before. We've done better before. We've had it muddy. Yeah. Let's have a look again. Right, let's have a look how we did. So we're lined up. So this was our, we got to judge which one's the dirty and muddiest. So that's, that's our one. That's the next one. And that's, and that's the first car. So I reckon we done all right there. I reckon we won the muddiest car competition. So let's have a look. Let's have a look how we, we got it pretty muddy. We got all over the top. We got everything. We got to remember to take the GoPro off. Look at that. We've had it muddy though, haven't we? Yeah. How's it looking under here? Oh, it's not too bad. One advantage of these alloys is it's a lot easier to see what's stuck in the brakes. Um, with the steels, it's a little more contained. It's harder to see what's going on. So, but there we go. We've had a great day. We'll get all that footage loaded up and we'll have a look on YouTube later. Today, I'm gonna to drive the Tesla. We've had the Tesla charging and it's got some, it's got quite a lot of range in it now. Um, right, but we can't get the lead out, but we're getting good now. So we're going on the app, and then on the app, we release that, pull that out, there we go. And then the, I think the flap closes on its own, but I think we can give it a tap. There we go. And there we go, yep, so we've got 223 miles in it now. Free charging at Land Rover's Off-Road Centre. So there we go, that's the end of the day. We'll drive the Tesla back home now. Right, so it's dark now. We've got the lights on and it's raining, so we've got the wipers on. So let's see how it does on the same distance. So, so yeah, as you can see, so that's coming home in the dark with the wipers going and we've got the heating on. Um, it's taken us about 55 miles of range to do 42 miles of driving. Which isn't too bad, because obviously when you've got the lights on and it's dark and that, it is going to consume more battery range. 
So there we go, there's some real life Tesla battery consumption. So we've just stopped the car, so we've got two software updates in a day. We've got the Land Rover Defender wants a software update, that takes 40 minutes. The Tesla wants to do an update and it takes 25 minutes. So we're home now, but yeah, if we need to go out somewhere in an emergency, we probably can't, or I'm sure you probably can, but um, it wants 25 minutes to, uh, to install, so. The modern world we're in. Oh, it's got a little countdown. Oh, it begins in. Okay. Right, it's like it's counting down to explosion. Right, let's get out before it goes. <laughs> 